but he may try to turn around and correct you just like he would another dog because in his mind there's a possibility that's how he views you. You're just another you're just another dog in the pack. Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. So this one's gonna be done a little bit different. Um, I'm going to answer some questions and a problem that we that a subscriber has. And in the meantime, I'm in the process of doing a down command here with Ted. And so he's just gonna be chilling out while we go through and I do what I can to be able to help best serve this subscriber as my goal is to help all of you as much as possible as well. So they sent me up, let me get it here pulled up. In the meantime, when I'm not talking, just watch this guy hanging out. So this is a problem that a lot of people struggle with um, because what it comes down to is it comes down to leadership. So uh, there's a couple things that uh, she talks about um, where she, so she says, if my dog growls when I give him leash corrections and gets bratty, how do I handle that? So there was some few questions that I asked um, to make sure that I have a much better understanding of what's going on. So I said, thank you for your question. What breed and how old? Also, can you give me an example of when that happens and the collar that you're using? So she said that he's a two-year-old pit bull plot hound mix. And if he breaks his place command, which I'm assuming is like a down command or is the down command, um, and she goes to put him back and corrects him, then the dog growls at her. So she also said that he's on a 2.25 millimeter size prong collar. And so what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna talk about a few things and, and explain a lot of times what's going on in a situation like this. So when you're dealing with leadership, so for example, some people think that leadership is just making sure that the dog sits before you feed it or the dog doesn't walk out the door in front of you before, um, before you walk out. But what it comes right down to is that to be the leader you need to be for your specific dog, you have to answer the three questions or the three concerns all dogs have at all times. And what that is, is they wanna know what's expected of them, where are they safe, and where's their next meal. Food, we don't really have to talk about that one. What's expected of me, depending on the dog's nerve structure, and I've got a video on nerve structure that goes in depth, so I would highly recommend that you watch that one if you haven't seen it yet. But understanding your dog's nerve structure when you're trying to train a dog is super important. If you've never heard of that before, again, I highly recommend that you watch that video. But what happens is somewhere along the line in your training, your dog doesn't quite know what's expected of it because there's parts of your life where you're trying to take the leadership role and then there's other parts of your life with your dog where he believes he's the leader. And so it's created kind of like this black and white re or this gray relationship that makes him question whether or not you even have a right to put him back down into the command. Also, depending on what foundation of understanding as far as the rules of the down in itself, there could be gray area in there as well. And then also the level of correction you're giving, which we're gonna talk about all of this. So first off, I would have to ask you, what are the rules of the down command? If you struggle answering that, or you're not quite sure what it is, or if it's just, well, when I tell my dog to lay down, they have to lay down. If there's no, if that's it, then there's no black and white boundaries that you are consistent in when it comes down to downing your dog and holding them to those standards. So for example, this dog, when I downed him, the down means that, that when I choose, he has to lay down and stay there through any distraction until I release him, whether it's two minutes or two hours. He's not allowed to bark, whine, crawl, or get up. He's not allowed to um, basically do anything outside of just laying there. 
So if he breaks those rules, then I correct him for it. Now, the foundation of the obedience has to be laid properly in the beginning before any type of corrections are given because it's important that we make sure that the dog has an understanding of what the sound of the down command is. So for example, if I use plots, the first time I tell him that, he goes, I don't know what that is because obviously dogs don't speak our language. They speak dog language, which is verbal and physical. Verbal is barking, growling, whining. The physical is jumping on each other, slamming into each other, mouthing each other, biting each other, those type of things. So, so what we wanna do is we want to start to show him through the Pavlov theory of what he can associate with the sound of plots. So in the beginning, like I said, I'd say plots and he would just look at me like, uh-huh. And so then I have to guide him and work him through that and show him what it means. Once he has an understanding of what it means or a better understanding, now we start to slowly add le certain levels of stimulation. So in this example that you're giving me, what's happening is it's a couple things. It's a possibility of a couple things that without the ability to just sit across from you and talk, um, I will say this, sometimes when a dog downs and you f hear kind of like this little bit of a grumble, sometimes it's like they, want, they don't want to do it, but they're doing it, but they're settling into it. So it's like a uh, kind of thing. It would be like, you know, I'm getting a little bit more up in age and there's times if I've been really active and my body is sore and I go and sit down, it's like, ugh. Sometimes a dog will do that. So we do want to determine whether or not it's that. And if that's the case, there isn't anything we do about it. But if it's a growl, a uh, brrrr, and, and he's looking at you or maybe his eyes are darting at you and darting away and growling, then we have to ask ourselves, is it because you're correcting him not hard enough properly? So it's almost like you're nagging him, which is a possibility. Sometimes people, they just don't quite know how hard to correct their dog. And so they um, give a little bit of a correction. And the next thing you know, you kind of turn into this nagging thing. And then if you don't know how to handle that, which obviously this was your question, how do I handle it? If you stop when he growls, he's learned that that growling stopped you from doing it. And dogs will only repetitively do what benefit them. And so of course, every time you correct him and he growls and you stop, then he's going to continue to growl. But when people ask me, how hard do I know to correct your dog? Or how hard do I know to correct my dog? The dog always answers that question. We can't answer that for them. How we determine the level of correction is once they do have a good foundational understanding of the down command, when we correct them, we want to correct them just enough that they want to avoid it in the future, but yet they can still clearly think through it. So we're not sending them into panic. And so in a situation like this, if you're just giving these little corrections and he's kind of getting frustrated with you, that's his way of letting you know I'm not a big fan of that. And so he's growling. A growl is a warning. And so you do have to be cautious because if you're nagging him and he's two years old now, he's fully mentally mature, there's a possibility that he might, because after a growl, he might go a little bit beyond that and try to nip you or bite you to stop you. So we do have to be really careful in this. Any dog can bite. If there's anybody out there that says, my dog will not bite, it's because they don't realize that dogs have teeth and that is one of their number one sources of communication. It doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to attack you, but he may try to turn around and correct you just like he would another dog because in his mind, there's a possibility that's how he views you. You're just another, you're just another dog in the pack. So in this instance, I want you to think when you go to correct him, if he is growling 
and you're stopping, all you're doing is telling him, good job, that's what you're supposed to do to stop these corrections. Obviously, he's getting up, which means that he doesn't care enough about your correction if you've been doing this a while and have a good foundation of understanding for your dog. He will continue to do this, become more bold in it, and you will end up having a bigger problem. Now, in this instance, I would highly recommend that you watch of any video I have. Um, I'm trying to think of, oh, the proofing one. So my proofing video, if I remember correctly, I gave a correction with a leash and prong collar on a dog that I didn't use my hand to pop it. What I did is I used my foot to pop against the line that allowed the correction to happen. So um, I recommend that you watch that. There is a technique to that because we still, along with anything, we wanna have a feel for it. So I'd recommend that you practice quite a bit before you ever try it on your dog because the last thing you wanna do is correct your dog too hard to send him, into <clears throat> send him into panic, which could cause him to fight. So again, this is a kind of a fine balance of understanding and knowing your dog's uh, level that's just enough he wants to avoid, but it's not enough to send him in a panic. Another thing is, is this. I'm not quite sure why, but there's many trainers out there that teach people to use a 2.25 millimeter collar on a dog that's over like 25, 30 pounds. I personally do not recommend that. It is, um, it's not designed for dogs bigger than 25, 30 pounds. In my 23 years of experience training dogs professionally with over 5,000 dogs trained with 100% success rate, every single dog like yours will be getting a three millimeter or 3.2. That collar, that size collar is great for any dog. I don't care if they're, they're 30, as long as they're 30 pounds and up, that three to 3.2 millimeter is by far the best and safest one to use. It is designed for those size dogs. Now, when it comes down to some of the things that I've talked about when, it, when you know, the, the, the rules of the, of the down command and things like that, sometimes when people struggle with their dog trying to train their dog, but they're not getting where they want, Majority of the time, it's not going to be, it's not because your dog isn't capable of learning. There's something along the line in your understanding that is not correct. Um, whether it was given to you by another trainer, things that you've seen, or things that you've read. So, what I would highly recommend is that you watch the four foundational videos that I have of how dogs work, right? The very first video is, um, nerve structure, what it is, and how to understand what your, the importance of understanding your dog's nerve structure. The next one is dog communication and how to read dog behavior and how dogs communicate with each other. The next one is what rural abuse looks like. There's a whole bunch of people watching these videos that need to watch that video of what rural abuse is because so many people abuse their dogs and they don't even know it because abuse isn't what a majority of people think, which is giving corrections or using your hand to give a correction. It has nothing to do with that. What it comes down to is, are you consistent? Are you black and white? Are you being fair? So that's a great video to watch. And then the one on leadership, what leadership looks like through a dog's eyes. It may give you the information that you need and kind of break those barriers for you to be able to have a much better understanding of, of what it is we're looking at or what it is you need to do in order to combat the problem of your dog growling. Because if, it's, if it is a growl and not a grumble, you do not want to move forward unless you feel or have the knowledge or feel like you have the knowledge to be able to move forward and start to have success. Because again, doing the same thing over and over, getting the same result, I tell my clients all the time, it's not the amount of training you do, it's the quality of what you do that is important. So um, if you have any other questions, please let me know. 
Um, if you want to uh, take a video of what's going on, if you have the ability to do that, uh, go into the description, you're gonna see the email that you can send that video to. Uh, so that way I even have a better understanding and I'll do a video speaking specifically to that. If I can see the dog and what it is you're doing, and if you can even give a little bit of an explanation of why you're doing what you're doing, then I'm gonna be able to help serve you best in that capacity. And then also, if you're interested, it doesn't matter how much training you've done with a dog before, uh, so many of the dogs that I get have already been trained by other trainers that didn't work. And again, that's not a put down to those trainers. But what it does come down to is that, is that not all training unfortunately works and gives the people what they want or what they need to achieve the goals that they have when they originally got their dog. So if you, if you wanna check out um, our online training program, it's $49.99 a month. It's covering the down command, the here command, and the walk. Every single thing that you need to know from day one to the day you finish is all lined out really, really well. That link is in the description as well. If you have questions on that, please let me know. And then obviously, if, if it comes right down to it and you need to actually have a conversation with me so I can help you, you can go to our website, which is AAADogTraining.com, and my phone number is on there. Not a lot of people do this over YouTube, but this is what I do for a living. And I don't care where you're at. I've got clients all over the nation. I can help you. So um, I have no question that there is an answer for this, and this is nothing that I haven't ever seen before and been able to help people fix before. So again, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Uh, let me know how this, um, if this helps you at all, and I really wish you the best. And again, thanks for watching. For anybody else out there that has questions, please leave them in the comment, and I would be more than happy to help you as well. So thanks again, and have a great day. Bye.